Hey everyone, this is Carolise, and this video is going to be about business requirements and business rules. So I just did some videos on business requirements. I'm doing a series on business requirements. I did one on what is a business requirement. Is the business requirement the same as Waterfall? I just did that video. So if you haven't watched those yet, please go check it out. And this video is going to be about business requirements and business rules. I'm going to give you some great examples of both. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. talking about business requirements and business rules so a business rule is typically a, a business policy right so it's a business policy that you know the business wants to enforce it's the way that they do business it's what they do to make sure they make profit so there could be a number of things that each business will have as a way they do business and those are generally categorized as business rules now the business requirement supports a stakeholders need which could be affected by the business policy or could include the business policy. So whereas the business rule is specifically the business policy, which exists regardless of whatever the project you're working on, the business requirement is about the stakeholders need and it may have to take into consideration whatever the business policy is. All right, I hope that was clear. I really do, I really hope it's clear. Let's look at an example of a business rule. So for example, only accountants will be allowed to issue invoices, right? That's a business rule. That's how they do business in this organization. Then there is, for example, applicants must have an account for at least six months to apply for a loan. That could be in a banking example where you need to have an account for this time before you can get a loan. Or in the case of renting, it could be renter must pay the first and the last month's deposit in order to successfully rent an apartment. Those are business rules that belong to the organization and this is how they do business and these are the things that are going to exist regardless of what project you're working on, regardless of what software you're building. This is how they do business. These are their business rules, right? So business rules are usually incorporated in your business requirements because it doesn't make sense for you to write requirements that's going to go against the business policy, right? So you have to make sure as you're writing your requirements that so you're taking into consideration how the organization has established their method of working, their policies, their regulations, you know, their, their rules for how they do business, okay? So with that in mind, um, the business requirements could be based off of the rule like I was explaining. So for example, we just talked about you know, only accountants will be allowed to issue invoices. So the business rule, you know, the business requirement that could be based off that business rule would say the logged in user must belong to the accountant access role in order to see the option to issue invoices. That's a way that you could make the functionality of your system that you're building um, respect the rule that the organization has. The other one says applicant must have an account for at least six months to apply for a loan. So the business requirement that could be based off that business rule could say something like, when the user clicks on the loans page, the system must display a message that informs the user that there are, for example, 180 minus account days left to apply for a loan. And as an indentation to that, and an addition to that, if the account days open is greater than 180, then allow the user to create a loan application. Now, there's something very interesting in this. Why did I say, you know, when the user clicks on the loan page, you must display a message to say, you have X number of days left before you can apply for a loan. Why didn't I just say, you're not able to apply for a loan until such and such a time, right? Because as you're writing your requirements, you always need to look for ways that you can encourage the user to keep coming back and encourage the user to be engaged with what you're presenting them. When you tell people, no, you can't do this, this is not allowed <laughs> because of your business rules, it's very harsh, right? It's very offensive. It's almost like, oh my God, the system is so rough, <laughs> right? So be careful as you consider your business rules to not display them or to not communicate them in a way that's like 
No, you can't. This is not against, this is against our policy. One of the most deterring things to me is when I go to a business place and they're telling me they're ripping off their policies to me. I don't really care about your policies. I'm trying to get something done. Tell me what you can do. Don't tell me what you can't do. So in a way to accomplish the business rule and still keep the customer or the user engaged, instead of telling them, no, you can't do this until you know you reach the six months requirement, I would say, hey, it's like a it's like a positive. Hey, you only have you know 30 days left before you can apply for a loan. I mean, that's great. You're there, you're almost there, you know. So it's encouraging, it's helpful. And then as a person, as you guys can see, I'm a very encouraging person and I have a very positive attitude in life. So I try to translate that in my requirements as well, right? So look for the way that you can spin these things to be positive because no, most of the time, the business rule is very restrictive. The business rule is why you can't do something, why we can't do this. So always look for a way that you can make it into a positive so that your customers, your end users, can walk away feeling like you're helping them as opposed to you're giving them all these roadblocks while they can't do something, okay? Now the other one is renter must pay first and last month deposit to rent an apartment. So an example of how we could incorporate the business requirements with this business rule, it could be when the rent application is approved, the first and last month's rent must be paid in full in order to reserve the apartment. And you could even tweak this somewhat, not saying that this is perfect, it could be, you know, two months, the equivalent of two months rent must be paid or, you know, something like that because the first and the last would normally be the same amount. So you could say it that way too. But basically you're saying that this has to be paid in full in order for them to move on to the step of reserving the apartment. And that's important. So these are ways that you incorporate business rules into your business requirements. But the business rule, you can't just pluck it and put it as a requirement, right? It has to weave itself into the language of how you write business requirements. And I have another video which talks about how do you write business requirements? What are the things that you should be doing and should not be doing? So we'll check that out when that's done, okay? Um, I haven't done it yet, so I don't have the link for you yet, but I will come back and put it once I do it. <laughs> now, even though it's business rules, sometimes these business rules can be system related, right? It depends on your development team and Maybe there is, you know, IT metrics or SLAs that they have to meet. And so these things will inform um, how your system that you're building is going to operate. For example, here's a couple of ones that says, you know, if the grid request shut down um, of the system, then put the system into standby mode. You know, if a message to operations fails to send, then queue the message and reset it every three minutes until it is delivered. These are like kind of system rules. Um, they may impact how you write your business requirements, but it's not something that you'll be getting from your elicitation um, activities with customers or clients or stakeholders. These are things that you would get from developers, <laughs> from IT people, and typically, you don't want IT to be telling you how the business needs to go. You don't want IT to be telling you the user's journey, but as you're writing your requirements, you may have to take into consideration some of the SLA, some of the business rules on the system side um, that would affect how your processes could go and how your, your business requirements are gonna go. So it's it's a fine line. I just want to throw this in there that there are sometimes system things that are also kind of business rules. Um, and if there's a different name for it, let me know, but <laughs> I still call it business rules. So just to note that there are some things that could be very system specific that you'd have to consider as well as you think about incorporating business rules into your business requirements. So there you have it guys, business rules and business requirements. I hope this was useful for you. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that you like the video, comment on the video, share the video, and go check out my blog at carlis.com. You know, if you like the kind of content, subscribe, you know, click the bell so you get notified. And I will see you next time in the next series on business requirements. Take care. See you then.